I'm testing a $250 monitor that's just as good as a $1,500 OLED. So a few months ago, I shelled out over $1,000 for this insane OLED monitor. I wanted the very best. And according to the internet, OLED is the undisputed champ. So I bit the bullet and paid the price. But lurking in the shadows, there existed a monitor that is just as good or even better for a measly one fourth the cost. So is it true? Did I really waste a thousand dollars when I could have gotten a monitor just as good for the price of some AirPods? And if it is true, you'll find me sobbing in that dark corner of the office for the next week. But if it isn't, then just how good is this $250 monitor? Am I being fooled by some tricky marketing? Well, to find out, I bought one and it sent me down one of the most insane rabbit holes I've ever ventured. So let me introduce you properly to the monitor itself. This is the AOC Q27G3XMN. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? It's got a whole load of fancy specs, but honestly, specs are just specs. What really matters is what it looks like. I unboxed the AOC, set it up, turn it on and... To be honest, I was having a little bit of trouble figuring out what specifically was so special here. It's bright, it's a thick boy, but what am I missing? And honestly, it doesn't even look that good. So what is the big deal here? To find out, I needed some side-by-side -side comparisons. We'll start with a $300 monitor first because most people spend that much on a good monitor. So I found a $300 Dell I had at the office and slapped them next to each other, hooked them both up, put some pretty videos on the screen, and immediately, the AOC definitely looked better. No contest there. But why? They're both $300 monitors. It really shouldn't make this much of a difference, right? So I finally did the boring thing and looked at both of their spec pages, which have a ton of terms that I didn't understand. Both monitors say they have HDR, a high refresh rate, 27 inches, but the Dell even has more resolution at 4K. So how is it that the AOC is that much better? Is it because of this new display technology called mini LED? This is where the never ending rabbit hole of learning, confusion, and in Enlightenment truly begins. So I took the bullet and spent an unreasonable amount of time researching everything I could about monitors, display technologies, and now I know things like IPS and full array dimming. As it turns out, to understand what's happening here, we need to first understand HDR. Things are gonna get a tiny bit technical here, but bear with me, it's worth it because afterwards you too will be a monitor god. So we've all heard of HDR, right? It's a fancy thing you see printed on TV boxes that make the colors better or brighter. Let me lay it out for you simple. HDR stands for high dynamic range, which means two specific things. One, higher brightness range, which means the things on your screen pop way more. Bright lights are brighter, scary dark tunnels are darker and scarier, you get it. And two, a wider color gamut. That basically means the colors are colorier. You've probably seen this part when you walk by the fancy TVs at Best Buy or Costco and there's some kiosk video playing on a $5,000 TV that makes you think, Wow, I didn't know roses could be that red. In short, HDR gets brighter and darker and has deep colors, which really does make a huge difference. However, believe it or not, the rabbit hole goes even deeper. Turns out, not all HDR is equal. Basically, 80% of the monitors out there have quote unquote HDR, but there's something they're not telling you, that there's numbers attached to it like grades. Numbers, they do their best to keep vague and not talk about. VESA, however, the grand council of HDR is here to save the day with a concrete HDR definition and certification process to get a meaningfully passing grade and make HDR actually worth it. Anything under a thousand isn't worth it. So what does display HDR a thousand even mean? VESA defines it as peak brightness of a thousand nits, black level of no more than 0.05 nits, and color volume of 95% of DCI-P3. You don't have to know any of those means. Just remember 1000 brightness, near zero darkness, and 95% color. That is good HDR. Alas, as someone trying to make sense of all this when comparing monitors, even knowing the stats don't solve anything. Because when you browse sales pages for TVs and monitors looking for these exact specs, you're not going to find it. Of course, it couldn't be that easy. They literally purposefully exclude these stats most of the time. So you don't realize that the HDR you're buying totally sucks. But I refuse to be tricked and I'm not going to let you get tricked anymore either. So I went farther down the rabbit hole to find all the specs myself. Surprise, surprise, the Dell website only tells you one of those things. And after digging through a bunch of monitor reviews, I found the holy grail of them all, ratings. 
are things. They do their own tests and they're reputable amongst even the smelliest of monitor enthusiasts worldwide. Finally, they have provided me with some actual stats on this Dell we can look at. So how bright does it get? A Wobbin 350 nits. How dark does it get? Not 0 0.05, but 37. Note, that's bad. And about 95% color gamut? Try 86%. See what I mean? This is an HDR display the same way I am a pro gamer when I complete a capture on the first try. If you haven't guessed by now, the AOC Mini LED does in fact meet these standards. This is what makes the monitor so special. It's the first actual HDR monitor for this cheap. Now that I have opened the third eye and can see through the monitor matrix, let's get back to comparing these two because things suddenly make a lot more sense. Ooh. I don't think I really have to narrate which of these two look better. I think you can tell. All 1000 of those nits of brightness means the bright objects like the sun here truly pop. That extra 10% on the color gamut also means the colors are noticeably better. But the most immediately evident difference are the darks. In true VESA HDR style, the AOC has dimming zones that allow it to completely turn the brightness in a given area off. That means pitch black blacks, just like an OLED. The Dell, by comparison, has no dimming zones, so anything dark is kind of gray, but then just sort of disappears entirely. Look at this scene. See all the little details in the shadows on the AOC? They just do not exist on the Dell. Gone, as the kids say, unalived. If you're watching an HDR movie on the Dell, I hope you don't care what's lurking in the shadows because you quite literally will not be seeing it. That's so funny, huh? my TV's like that. All right, sure, the AOC is well enough and it outperforms a similarly priced display. whoop de doo that's nice and all, but that's not what we're really here for today, is it? So on paper, the specs for this monitor rival mini LEDs and OLEDs that cost about $1,000. But does that actually mean it does? I liked what I saw against the Dell, but I wasn't really sure it would outshine my beloved Samsung and OLED that I paid a kidney for. I've been using this Samsung for a few months now and honestly, I've fallen in love with it way more than I was expecting. The size is obviously crazy. I don't even full screen things anymore. I just plop them to the side when I'm not using them. There's that much space. I got free parking on my screen. But even size aside, the inky blacks, rich colors, and general responsiveness has really sold me on the whole OLED superiority complex. All that's to say, it is very hard for me to imagine this AOC competing with my Samsung. Regardless, regardless of what this little piece of paper that came in the box says. So all that's left is to put these two side by side and find out. Wait, where am I gonna fit these two together? The Samsung is over four feet wide and the AOC another two feet. Do I even own a seven foot desk? Well, the bad news is, I do not. But the good news is, after some quick investigation, I found out my main desk is six feet wide and that I am simply not afraid of having them dangle off the edge of it. It'll be fine. If there was ever a David versus Goliath visual in tech, it's right here, folks. And one very quick note, shooting footage of monitors is hard. And we've done our best to shoot it real to life, but ultimately it's just never going to look exactly as it does in real life. Heck, unless you're watching this on a true VESA certified HDR 1000, you literally can't see it as it appears in person. This video isn't even filmed in HDR, so you're doomed no matter what. So to some extent, you'll just have to let my words weave a mental tapestry. Anyways, let's get this comparison going. I have to admit, I was immediately blown away. And by blown away, I mean seriously questioning some previous life decisions. The AFC really truly is on par with the OLED. The specs didn't lie to me after all, and I am, in fact, panicking in the dark corner of the office, wishing I didn't know about this monitor. Is the era of OLED truly over? Like, they're close enough that you honestly need them side by side to tell the difference. If they were in different rooms, I think they looked exactly the same. In terms of color saturation, the main difference is the OLED is maybe 10% more brightness in this neutral scene, which tracks. It covers 10% more of the color gamut than AOC, but that's 10% better, not 400% better, which is what it need to be to justify the four figure hole in my bank account. But wait, not all is lost for Team OLED. We still have round two. It's bread and butter, dark scenes. But what about the mini LED's 300 plus dimming zones, I hear you, Bonder. Isn't it capable of achieving perfect blacks like the OLED? Yes, but also no. If we look at a dark scene like this, with huge chunks of darkness, then yeah, the AOC is pretty close. The OLED's physical screen is ambiently darker and glossier, but it's close enough. Though, wow, reds do pop on that Samsung. That, this shot looks crazy vibrant. It's probably the best case scenario for it in general, really. 
However, let's do some quick math. A 47 inch monitor means 311 square inches of screen. With 336 dimming zones, that means each of those zones is just a bit under a square inch, which is pretty great for big and even medium sized chunks of darkness. But if we take a look at this comparison, hopefully you'll be able to see where that starts to fall apart. If you look at these little bits of shadow under the blades of grass, those are way too small for our one inch dimming zones to account for. So for smaller pieces of darkness like that, the mini LED is back to grayish blacks. Now compare that to the small shadows on the OLED and the overall contrast in images like these is noticeably better. That's right, mini LED. Maybe I'm not emotionally ruined. We will chalk up a solid win for Team Betty of the past and our $1,000 wallet. Unfortunately, the fight isn't over yet. There's one round left, the mini LED's bread and butter, bright scenes. I couldn't help but wonder if the AOC's extra 600 nits of brightness actually makes a difference. I feel like there is no way to overcome that extra 10% color saturation that Samsung has. Well, folks, this is the part of the video where David nails Goliath in the head with a rock because believe me when I tell you, in bright scenes, almost everything looks better on the AOC. Super bright objects like suns and lights pop twice as much, and the difference is evident the second you look at them. This isn't a difference you need them side by side for, but when they are side by side, the lack of brightness on the OLED is so stark that it looks like you turned its contrast down to 50% as a cruel joke. But interestingly enough, it's not just the brightness that the AOC wins out on here, it's also the colors. I know it sounds like I've gone off the deep end, all Betty is off a rocker and saying the mom monitor with objectively less color depth has better colors. But here's the thing, the rabbit hole of displayed truth and wisdom reveals all. As it turns out, different levels of saturation can make two objects with identical brightness seem way darker than the other. And to that end, a display with greater brightness means the saturation of the colors can be boosted greatly if the scene is bright. And the end result is in bright scenes, not only is the AOC just plain brighter, but the colors are significantly more vibrant as well. This conclusion breaks my brain a little bit, but I can't deny what I'm looking at with my own two eyeballs. I'm sure it's probably hard to see on your screen, but you just have to believe me, literally everyone in the office took one look at this comparison and immediately picked the mini LED as the winner. And if it isn't obvious enough by now, seeing the little $250 engine that could do this is amazing and fascinating and also a little depressing as the person who bought its competitor. I felt like I had truly reached the peak of the mountain with OLED and now I'm noticing there's perhaps an even higher mountain right next to it. To be fair, it's not as cut and dry as that. That, though. There's definitely some other things OLED straight up wins as well. One of those is viewing angles. The AOC is a VA panel, which is famous for having a bad viewing angle, which is fine if you're sitting at your desk as intended, but if you're looking at it off angle even 20%, things get washed out real fast. I kept having people come up to the AOC be like, oh, ew, it's nowhere near as good as the Samsung, only for me to have them stand in a certain place and go, oh, Never mind, it looks great. No such problem with the OLED. It looks equally good from every angle just like me. Another one is motion clarity. You know how things tend to, you know, move on your screen? Well, ideally you want them to not leave a trail behind them, like they're being haunted by the ghost of Christmas one millisecond ago. I tried putting this extremely cute motion clarity test on the AOC, and here's the macro footage of that test shot at 120 FPS, slowed down to 25% speed. See those little ghosties? Not ideal. To be clear, this actually isn't terrible motion quality. Believe me, there are way worse results out there in the monitor world but now look at the same test on the OLED. Way less ghosties. Another plus for the OLED. So what is the verdict then? Did I actually waste my thousand dollars or maybe I made a good decision? Well, no, obviously not. This thing is a huge ultra wide. It serves a different purpose, but just in terms of raw visual performance, it's a tough call. Basically for medium brightness scenes, they're tied. For even slightly bright scenes, the mini LED wins. And for dark scenes with lots of shadow, OLED wins. So where does that leave us? overall. Uh, okay. I know this is a cop out, but it kind of just comes down to personal preference. The AOC does almost everything really well. Honestly, maybe comes out the victor in more comparisons overall. And it's also a better fit if your computer is in a bright room with windows. But the dark scenes on the OLED are just straight up immediately noticeably better. The AOC does in fact do very well with that darkness for being an LED based monitor, but you just can't beat pixel by pixel dimming of OLEDs. 
If your room is darker and you just love inky blacks, then maybe an OLED is right for you. The real takeaway though, if you ask me, is just how crazy it is that this even is a competition. To be clear, even if you compare this AOC against a more comparable OLED like the ASUS ROG Strix OLED, you're still shelling out $800 for those sorts of specs and capabilities. Getting comparable, if not even better performance out of something that's nearly one fourth the cost, it's just, it's unheard of. If there was a car out there with literally four times the horsepower and comfort from all its competitors, the car market would simply crash. We'd all buy that one. So I might not want to replace my giant ultra wide Samsung, but the fact that it's even worth considering says enough. Basically, my writer has already stolen it and is playing HDR games on it, so at least it's being used. But in the meantime, I'm gonna stick to my 49 inch Samsung ultra wide OLED. And if you wanna hear more about that monitor, watch this video right here. Bye.